Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's live stream. Hopefully, everybody's having a good night tonight. Kind of one of those things. Hey, Stephen, welcome to the stream, man. Welcome to tonight. Ah, uh, man, what a week. It has been a crazy, crazy week as we kind of get ready to get through into this week's recordings and all kinds of fun stuff because I have fallen behind. All good, man. I just thought you were enthusiastic to see me, so... <laughs> So, how's everybody doing tonight? Where are we all doing? Where are we all at? What's all going on? Because, man, I am excited to unbox this piece of equipment tonight. So, uh, taking a break from the Enterprise G because I haven't gotten through all the sanding because I was away um, from, from the shop uh, <laughs> doing all kinds of fun stuff over the weekend. And I just didn't get it finished and get it finished getting it cleaned. So... But I've had this on my desk for a while, and now with the Neptune 3 Pluses, I need some command and control over the Neptune 3. So uh, this BeagleCam V2 has been sitting here kindly in its box, just awaiting my attention. And I like the BeagleCam because they also send you the cables that you need. But I also have another little box from them that is something we're going to take a look at as well. That might be kind of fun to look at with uh, the resin printers. Time lapsing resin. Huzzah! So, kind of one of those things. Uh, I attended the Superstar Comic Con here in Savannah over the last weekend. And let me tell you guys, it was a lot of neat people, a lot of fun stuff. Jonathan Franks was there. Um, lots of voice actors. I believe the guy that voice actored Ezra in Star Wars Rebels was there. A lot of people at the, at the Comic-Con this last weekend, so definitely was a blast. If you haven't made it to a Comic-Con, find one. They're all over the place, man, and they're a lot of fun. Just seeing everybody in the cosplay, what everybody comes up with, and all the neat things that you're going to find. Because there was one guy, he has just stood out to me since Sunday, that uh, was at a booth, and I had some of my old Star Trek stuff up for sale, and he saw my Star Trek Micro Machines and went and just could not walk away without them. And that was great to see. Um, glad he got something from his childhood because I have my sets still up here. Um, and those were just ones that I'd happened to have found. But uh, yeah, great, great kind of adventure. If you guys don't get it, haven't gotten to a Comic-Con, you're sci-fi fans or whatever you're into, Pokemon, all that stuff, take a look around at the ones around you because some are pop culture, some are anime. And my camera is kind of going nuts, I've noticed, when I move around. Uh, so there's just a lot of them to kind of take a look at and find the right one that you might enjoy. And go take a look, guys. I mean, what's the worst thing you do? You walk around and see some pretty cool stuff. So, But without further ado, because time is always a thing, let's... Not that camera. That camera. Let's get this guy out of the box and start taking a look at it. So this is the Beagle version two from Minton. I have the V1 and there's a lot of changes that happened with the V2 that were very, very needed. Um, the first change is, and the biggest one for my opinion, and honestly in a lot of ways, was the change to focusing. So to do manual focusing in the old one, on the V1, you actually had to open up the enclosure and focus it. This one you don't. The manual focusing is on the outside of the camera, which is a great thing. And honestly, this guy is not that big. Ta-da! So kind of taking a measurement, we're about three inches tall. So this is basically three by three, this little box. And we stand with lens about an inch and a half wide or depth. So definitely a change. We got micro SD cards, we got power, and we've got our USB connection out to the printer. Apparently there's a data out. So that is for what's in the other box. But some of the other changes that came with this, and the average price point for this device is about $100. A link to it out on Amazon 
Uh, my affiliate link is down in the description if you decide you're interested in one of these. But one thing I have noticed is we now have a tripod included. We didn't, I don't think we had that in the V1. So that is a very good addition and very welcome addition. And you can see the, uh, the Enterprise G is still here. It didn't go anywhere, guys. Just, I didn't get to work on it, sorry. But uh, let's get this tripod set up here. We'll get our handy dandy camera on. Because one of the reasons why I want this up and running is because my Neptune 3s are not in my main print shop. They are actually, unfortunately, exiled to another area of the house. Because, well, unfortunately, there's not enough room in my print shop. <laughs> so, all right. So, bye-bye cardboard. So, we've got our two USB cables. One's a USB-C to USB. One is a micro USB to USB. Get rid of that box. Get rid of that. <laughs> and then they also send the USB A to B cable, depending on your printers. So, basically, I think the USB C cable is power. Yes. So, USB C power plug and adapter is your power. I'm actually probably going to go through the setup here and start getting this kind of ready. Plug right in here. Now, during this setup, you do it with your phone with the app. There are some things I will not show because, well, honestly, you guys don't need to know my Wi Fi password. All right. So I've given it power. Now I'm going to go over here to my phone. I just heard a very loud click, which I'm hoping is supposed to happen. Ooh, we're ready for Wi-Fi. And we'll find the Beagle Print app. Now, I do have two of the V1s I'm not currently using. I could have put them out there, uh, but I just had not. Yes, I want to log in again. Did I break my app? Uh-oh. Apparently I broke my app. <laughs> or I have the old one. That could be the issue too, is I don't have the right app. Beagle print. And network is abnormal. Please check whether you're not, I'm on Wi-Fi. wheel. And if you were new and you had an iPhone or that, they have a wonderful QR code here. You can go and I need to go get the version in the app store. It could be mine is just out of date. Nope. It says mine's fine. I may have to remove it and reinstall it. Oh, hey, dark fire minis. Uh, well, this ain't boding well, is it? Yeah, because my app is just flat out crashing. So, I am going to completely delete the app. Remove app. Delete app. Delete. Ta-da! Then we'll go back to the app store, and we'll download it again. Ah, oh, the fun of technology when things work and when they don't work, right? It's always fun when stuff like this goes on. We'll get this downloaded here real quick. Do -do 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 -do. Let's say my network shouldn't be having anomalies at all. My network's been fine all week. And you guys are watching me on the network, so I don't know what's going on. But we'll take it one step at a time. So what we'll do is we'll try to get through. We'll try to get through this tonight. No guarantees, guys. This may be the end of the stream right here. Oh man.
but I'm looking forward to putting this on one of the Neptunes um, and kind of angle it enough that I can see both of them. Uh, but I don't, I'm still planning on running the print from the Neptune. That way my filament sensor still, or for all I know, which I haven't read, they may have fixed that. So, but mainly I'm, I'm after the camera. That's what I'm after. Okay, app re-downloaded. Allow, allow. Hey, username and password. You guys don't need to see that. Uh, incorrect password. I've got a login, so I don't know if it's actually logging me in or not. Here's hoping. Well, what is going on here? Clicked off my internet and just went on the cellular to see if that helps the problem, but I do not appear to be getting able to sign in. Maybe I haven't used my account in so long they got rid of it. So I'll make an, I'll, we'll try making a new account. Country. I love autocorrect. Okay. Sorry guys, I know this is kind of a boring part, but waiting for it to send me a code. To my email address. Let's send code, and I'm obviously just kind of stuck. <laughs> uh, check whether your network can be accessed. You're on my network. I don't get what's going on with that. I allowed everything. It's just kind of being poopy. Let's. I guess I need to be patient.
This is not good. I just can't get in, guys. Well, that makes a bummer for the stream, doesn't it? So I'm not getting the email and I keep getting tips that uh, my network is abnormal. Obviously not, I'm streaming, but we'll do one thing. We'll pull the old IT card. We'll uh, turn it off and turn it on again. By that I mean my phone. Because I really want to work with this. But kind of taking a look around, we've got the data port out. We've got the manual focus. You just turn it right here now and you can focus the lens. Before you couldn't do all that. It's definitely a lot lighter. I like the tripod, um, the data out port while we wait on my phone to reboot. Which I'll turn it back on now. Let's take a look at box number two while we wait. So they came out with a UV sensor that will connect to your Beagle Cam to let you start time-lapsing your resin printers. And let me tell you, I'm kind of excited about this idea. Other than I have to open up the printer to get the sensor in there. So, from my understanding of how this works, it's supposed to Bluetooth, I think it Bluetooth connects. Yep, so you get it, you Get it in your printer so the UV light will trigger the camera. And then it looks like this Bluetooth connects to your Beagle Cam. And then you set up your time lapsing. That's pretty cool. So that is something I am definitely going to be checking out. Because uh, time-lapsing resin prints, as some of the resin prints that I do are pretty darn epic. So, uh, definitely kind of something I want to get into. But like I said, the main goal was for me to get this set up for a... Uh, set up so I could keep an eye on the uh, Neptune 3s, and I'm just not having luck with that tonight. <sighs> you know, that's always the fun of this. Hey, Douglas. It's always the fun of this. Whenever you need technology to work, <laughs> it no bueno All right. So how are things going in the world for Douglas? The Monster Illagoos, both of them are doing really, really well. I'm very happy with both of them. I just want to make sure that, uh, I want to be able to basically monitor them. And, uh, that was the whole point of this one was to unbox this beautiful new little tool and get logged in and do that, but it's just kind of being a butt, <laughs> which is the way technology always works because it keeps saying my network is abnormal, but I'm sitting here talking to you on the same network and all that stuff, so I don't understand what's what it's having a fit about, so, but I keep getting the, uh, well, it went away, but Let's try a password reset. Maybe it's that. I love that it says, it seems your email has been typed in incorrectly. Uh, let me finish typing in the email. How about that? I'd love it if I could get logged in. 
I can't even do the forgotten password. There's got to be something going on. It can't be. Uh, there's got to be something boogered somewhere. Because since I can't log into this, I can't even look at my other ones. So, fun. And all it says is something is abnormal about your network. So, yeah. Um, was not going to work on the G because I haven't had time to sand it and I don't have a mask here to continue working on it. So let's have the wonderful discussion, guys. Light it or build it. So the two monster Illigoos, they're having a blast out there. Yep, not even that email. I don't get it. I don't get it. This should be, this should be easy peasy. I don't get it. And that's my one complaint with this stuff too, is you got to do it all through an app. I mean, uh, Douglas, my problem with it saying it's a slow connection is I'm streaming to you guys and I have gigabit fiber. So it can't be, a, it, it's something on their end. It's got to be. Because this doesn't make sense. So there's probably something. I'm wondering if it maybe just kicked me out because I haven't used mine in a while. But... I can't get it to do anything. Like when I, if I try to set up a new account, hit send code, it just bombs. I mean, this is not a good user experience. Even taking my phone over to off of cellular over just to cellular, I should be getting something. So I'm wondering if it's just time of time of day that their uh, their stuff's down because that's all I keep getting is that tips thing. So I can't proceed. Try one more thing. I'm sorry, I know it's out of view. Maybe there's a way I can log in. Nope. I don't want to subscribe to you if it don't work. Log in. Oh look, now it's sending me a code to my email. Gee. The website's working. And there's the, uh, there's that. So settings, my account. Well, guys, I hate to say it, but this is kind of a bust. I was really kind of hoping to show off this camera and, you know, actually walk it out there and let you guys see it on my thing, but apparently we're not going to do that tonight. So, yeah, but one of the things I will begin working on is the modification to add the Bluetooth UV sensor. So... I'm really kind of curious to start actually getting, uh, well, JJ, it's always worse when you're doing something like this, like trying to show it and the tech doesn't work, but Douglas, thanks for checking. So they must be down for maintenance or something. It's just bad timing, hopefully, but I am going to probably put this on one, 
either my, one of my Mega 8Ks or my M3 Max to really kind of start showing off some of those awesome UV prints. And I don't even think this is very expensive. But the Bluetooth connection, the camera, getting those shots, I think is going to be really, really kind of cool. Yeah, Wi-Fi is probably not the issue. It's something with them. It's got to be. Like I said, who knows where their servers are. So... Could just be time of night that they're down for maintenance. Because, I mean, I just get the spinny wheel, then the tip of abnormal network. So, I wonder if the abnormal network is on their end. Turn my Wi-Fi back on and try one more time. And actually, I'm almost wondering if I had this problem. I'm going to have to go back and check. I wonder if I had this problem when I did the... Uh, uh, when I did the first one, <laughs> I wonder if it is that, oh man, but really cool looking camera, nice design, love the tripods included now, love the data port out, SD, micro SD card, um, this will need a firmware update once I can get into it, um, USB out, data port, Bluetooth connectable accessories now. So they're really stepping up the game to um, to make their products one more affordable. I mean this whole this the camera, the accessories, I think I think the UV accessory is like 25 something, but this whole camera is a hundred bucks. And you gain control over your printer. Now Raspberry Pis, the can of kits I used to get for the Raspberry Pi 4s. Used to be the same amount of money, but then I had to buy a webcam on top. And you, I don't even think you get a Raspberry Pi kit for very cheap anymore. They're not what they used to be after the chip shortage. So, so definitely one of those things, being able to position this anywhere around the printer and have video time-lapsing, which, man, I miss doing time-lapsing. Free. Um, it was always fun to time lapse and go back and just watch it be cool. So, um, if I can get this set back up, set up, um, I guess. Well, my friend, you're becoming a video instead of a live stream. Way to throw me down the tube, man. Uh, but hey, that's what happens, guys. And really, this was all I had planned for tonight. So, has anybody got any 3D printing questions? Stuff they want to talk about? Want to talk about Ahsoka? Uh, yeah, let's, let's just turn it over to the questions. Yeah, the Raspberry Pis used to be where it's at. Now they're just going for a bunch of money. And actually, I was I was having a problem with a printer. Um, and I it kept thermal overloading. But what was weird was it only thermal overloaded when the Raspberry Pi was connected. Come to find out, it was the Raspberry Pi causing the thermal overload, causing the printer to shut down, causing print fails. That's why I want this to work, is to kind of stop and double check that thing. Now, Raspberry Pis are cool. I love them. Um, and I actually kind of want this to free up some Raspberry Pis for other projects, maybe. Um to turn it into a light controller or something else for our, our model builds. So yeah, I, uh, I'm going to go probably watch it. I, I'm, I'm a good husband. I wait, I watch it with my wife when it comes out. So I will not know anything about it till probably about this time tomorrow night. So I try to be a good husband. So um, well, it's one of those things. I, I like spending time with my wife and that's something that we do together. I know she watches it because I want to see it. Um, I've been in low, I've been having fun with Star Trek Lower Decks season four. Um, that one's out and about if you guys haven't caught, the, I think the first three episodes are out. Um, starting to get the itch to possibly print a Cerritos. So... 
I think the V1, I thought the V1 did have night vision. It was just the grayscale, though. Um, again, I wanted to try it and test it out and do it with you guys, but it going pooey on me. <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to hold out for like 12 minutes that maybe, you know, it's just like that hour maintenance where they're down for only a certain time, but, uh, still abnormal. I know it's not my Wi-Fi or else this YouTube stream wouldn't be working, so... Uh, oh, yeah, we always try to, you know, she'll watch... I'll sit there and watch shows with her. She'll watch shows with me. Lower Decks, I like it. Um, it took some time for me to build love for it, but... Um, I mean, if I had a choice, Lower Decks or the Orville, I'm going to watch the Orville. Um, but that's just me. I really like the Orville. I'm really hoping the Orville is not done, um, even though it's kind of set like it is. But we will see. Uh, what else have we got going on in the print shop? Um, oh, I am sad to inform you guys that Green Goblin had an accident and the model was destroyed. So we will not be bringing that one back onto the stream. Um, it took me a day or two to stop being angry about it. But could I reprint it? Yes. Am I going to? No. I got other stuff I want to work on. So um, like, you know, Babylon 5 stuff. Because uh, I'm working on a few things in regard to that. So lots of cool stuff coming. Hopefully here pretty soon. And, uh, yeah, still, still working on this guy. So hopefully we'll be wrapping it up here soon. Started, got the flesh painted on, on the back. Now I got to make it gross looking and then rework the metal work. So of uh, the enterprise F or the enterprise J, uh, there's some pretty, if you're looking for the form, there's several Decent low poly. I call them low poly. They don't have very extreme detail of the Enterprise F. The J, um, if you go out to Thingiverse, there's an Enterprise collection. The J in there is actually pretty good. I like that one a lot. Um, again, not super high detail. The detail is probably going to be paint. So, Hank, you probably want to go kind of... Sh Honestly, when I search models, like especially if it's something for me for personal use, uh, Yegi.com is where I start. Because Yegi is kind of a search engine of all the other platforms. It's a very good tool um, that kind of lets you find things off other on multiple platforms. Because um, I know sometimes I, it drives me nuts that uh oh what am I what am I thinking about? Um, you know I try to. CG Trader and all of them are great websites. Do not get me wrong. Picks Up by Frozen. If you haven't looked at that one, go check that one out. Um, what else is out there? Cults. I find a lot of stuff on Cults that does really, really well. Um, but it's just kind of one of those things you got to kind of find what works for you. And uh, definitely kind of look at it. So definitely keep looking around out there, Hank. I have not. I have not catch, caught Uncle Jesse's latest video. I have been completely in catch-up mode uh, since the Comic-Con this week. Well, even before the Comic-Con this weekend. Um, just with so many house projects and uh, sh the Comic-Con show eating up two days. And then just lots of projects have flown in. Uh, you can kind of see my board back there. There's quite a list of stuff I'm currently working on. Tasks I have to do this week. And I've got parts coming for the CR Scan 1. I want to get it back into action over there and get some stuff scanning. I've got a re request in with the mall 3D scanner for some assistance because I'm having a problem with it. And also, if you guys haven't seen it from 3D Maker Pro, the seal scanner meant for miniatures, um, that guy is secured. Um, we will get the seal light and the armature. So that should be coming 
Um, there's a printer, 17 inch printer, supposedly on the boat, the galaxy one in October, we should see the, uh, shoot. Um, the, uh, mega eight K S we should see that here, hopefully in September or in October, they're supposed to start shipping that printer. Uh, what else is going on? <laughs> um, my friend Joe, he sent me the uh, AK Neon Batch so I can do some lightsaber painting. Uh, what else? <laughs> I got the new TIE Fighter model kit, the 132nd. So uh, keep an eye on out for that coming to the other channel. Uh, this week we're going to hopefully have a video over there of the... Uh, Um, I'm going to start the enterprise, the now fan home enterprise D kit builds. So I've got, I think one through 62 now. So I'm going to start building that too on the other channel. What is the best way to decide if a model sh should be FDM or resin print? Um, one size, how big do you want it Two, how much detail do you want, Steven? Um, so the bit, a lot of times I say the bigger you want it, one and two cost. So the bigger you want it and the amount of detail you want kind of helps me determine where I'm going. So I may look at, uh, well here, I've got the Roger Young at this size. This guy is roughly 13 inches long which for a solid print, that's about as far big as I can go for this ship in a resin printer. Now I can go a lot bigger in one piece. I can go a lot bigger in FDM with the Neptunes. I can go a lot larger. So, and, but also do you want your layer lines and all that kind of stuff come into impact when you're wanting to do that? So finding your decision and it depends on what you're making. If you're making model ships and all that kind of small stuff, then I would probably stay with resin. If you're looking to make cosplay armor, all that kind of stuff, FDM is probably going to be more your way to go. Um, I do starships in both. Um, if I'm making it small, like this Enterprise G kit, if I were to have made this, resin would have been how I went to get the detail. But, and even with these Warhammer ships, um, resin is the way I went because it's small and an ultra high detail amount of detail. Um, if I printed this FDM, I've been picking supports off all day long. So that's one way to kind of look at it, but also, you know, durability, how strong does your print need to be? Cause resin, strong resin can get real expensive real quick. Um, I think one bottle of the tough resin from frozen that I like is almost 75 bucks for a bottle and my mega 8k will need two to just fill the bay. So uh, that print is going to be very expensive if I do it where most, you know, my average bottle of resin is about $40. Um, I get it on subscription order for 35 a bottle. Usually unless I need extra, then I'm paying almost 40 bucks a bottle. So, but even some models like this one, like our nice big Lord Vader, I mean, I like resin because of the high detail. Um, now, sometimes I'll split them. So that's also something to kind of keep in mind. I will split models. Like the one I just showed you, Lord Vader. I may do the base in FDM and do the figure in resin. So sometimes I combine and do it all together. So, so kind of one of those things. It kind of makes it difficult. And there's... There's some cool stuff out there for the resin stuff too. There's actually a Kickstarter, which is a complete resin workstation that has pull out to bring your wash stations out and your resin printers under an enclosure and has venting out. There's all kinds of cool stuff going on with the resin printing right now. Uh, so does that kind of answer your question, Steven? Um, size, complexity, and there is nothing wrong with doing a combination absolutely nothing wrong with doing some parts in resin and some parts in FDM. Uh, 
just to make it easier on yourself sometimes too. So hopefully I answered your question there, Stephen. I know I kind of went, you know, the long way here, but hopefully that kind of, kind of found the root of your answer. Uh, let's see here. What else going on? Hoping to have the Maleficent prototype finished up this week. So her figure stands about like that, our larger one. Uh, and kind of go there. So I'm going to try the app one more time. We're spinning longer. Nope, we crashed. No bueno. Well, that's a bummer. We'll have to revisit this one at another time. Uh, hopefully I'll have it set up. Maybe we'll get to show it off. I'll probably turn this into a video, to be honest. So that's all right. Beagle Cam version 2 makeup will be coming. So not a big deal. All right, I'm glad I was able to answer that question for you, Stephen. And it's one of those things, if you're working on a project and you're curious, feel free to reach out to me via email. Um, be glad to help you. Uh, yeah, Douglas, that project was actually really cool. Um, I was glad to get into the SEAL scanner because um, one of the things I've been working on, and I don't know if you guys will be interested, is um, sometimes SELs are really awesome, but I hate the pose. I hate the way the figure is posed. So I've actually been learning how to, in ZBrush, take the figure in and remap it so that I can change the pose. Um, so if that's something you guys are curious, definitely let me know too. And we can, uh, maybe talk about showing that on the stream. Doubt it's going to change anything, but <coughs> oh, sorry guys. Been dealing with this cough for a few weeks. Just comes and goes, just a tickle. I don't know why. Just is what it is. But uh, my wife did get a good laugh at me earlier today. I had my full PPE and had my my Vader mask on when I was washing some prints in the uh, denatured alcohol earlier today. So she got her giggle out of that one. Uh, but guys, I hate to call it a bummer, but unfortunately we're just kind of stuck. I will try to get the rest of the Enterprise G sanded for next week or maybe later this week. We'll just kind of see how things go. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody showing up. I'm sorry. The, uh, the app just didn't want to play ball and let us show off this beautiful little camera. So, but we got it out of the box. There's, there's the big kicker, right? We got her out of the box and took a look at it. So now I will go take the new UV sensor and see if I can attach it to one of my resin printers. Fairly easy to even kind of maybe get a recording of that. So, all right, guys, I appreciate every one of you for signing up. If you've made it this far into our ramblings and discussion, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the channel. Also, consider joining the channel as a member. Hit that join button, get access to our Discord, where me and Douglas and others, we just kind of all just hang out and chat So and work on printer issues. And if you have a printing problem, please reach out to me via email, and I'll be glad to give you a hand. So thank you, guys. We will see you next Tuesday.